Hello everyone, today we're diving into something super cool in the world of AI, instance diffusion. So, what makes instance diffusion stand out? Traditional text-to-image models generate high-quality images, but they lack control over individual instances. Instance diffusion changes the game by allowing free-form language conditions for each instance. You can specify instance locations using simple points, scribbles, bounding boxes, or even intricate segmentation masks, and you can combine these methods for even more flexibility. This diffusion model happens with three major innovations, Unifusion, ScaleU, and the multi-instance sampler. Unifusion projects different instance-level conditions into the same feature space. ScaleU enhances image fidelity by recalibrating main features and low-frequency components and the multi-instance sampler reduces information leakage between multiple instances. On the COCO dataset, instance diffusion outperforms previous state-of-the-art models by a huge margin. We're talking 20.4% better AP50 box for box inputs and 25.4% better IOU for mask inputs. Plus, it supports iterative image generation. You can add or edit instances without altering the pre-generated ones too much. Imagine progressively building a scene with multiple objects, like adding flowers to a vase. In this video, I want to explore a new technique that allows running stable diffusion and instance diffusion together in the Comfy UI environment. The official GitHub repo for this instance diffusion model is now available, containing all the relevant information and custom Comfy UI nodes you'll need. As you can see from the repo, there are instructions for installing the three required model files from Hugging Face into a dedicated instance diffusion model folder. You'll need to follow those setup steps carefully. It works with bounding box masking and excitingly also integrates the spline editor from KJ Notes that we discussed for explicitly controlling object motion in video animations. Check out this example. You can plot the path for the bird to fly from the top of the frame down to the middle and the left and right hands are choreographed along separate spline curves, controlling their movements second by second. Another example shows using a YOLO object detector to identify elements and transform them into entirely new forms while preserving the original shapes. Here, a person morphs into a werewolf creature, retaining the basic body positioning. There's also an example attempting to mask and edit multiple people simultaneously using object detection. And they've included OpenPose integration as well for potentially more user-friendly keypoint control over positioning. So let's dive into using this in Comfy UI. I already have the Instance Diffusion extension installed, which comes bundled with some starter workflow files. If we go back to the GitHub repo and look in the examples subfolder, there are two pre-made workflows to explore. The Spline Editor 1, controlling the hands and bird, and then a four-people workflow using object detection. However, I did run into an issue where the YOLO bounding box tracker in that second example workflow wasn't functioning properly on my setup. The instance diffusion nodes work fine, but specifically the video tracking nodes coordinating with this project seem to have some implementation problems. Taking a closer look, you can see the error I'm getting when trying to use the YOLO bounding box tracker by default in this example. For some reason, it's unable to utilize the YOLO segmentation models despite me installing the latest versions. It's complaining about not being able to receive the list of image arrays as input. So clearly some bugs in these rushed video tracking nodes created by the same author. Not the most robust implementation out of the gate, but I'm sure they'll iron out those issues over time. In the meantime, I've pivoted to an alternative approach using the open pose bounding box tracker that does seem to work reliably. This method allows using the DW pose preprocessor to obtain more granular face and hand key points for human figures. You could also utilize the general open pose or animal preprocessors depending on your use case. I prefer DW pose for the additional detail when tracking human motion. Before running this, there are a couple workflow quirks to be aware of. It has these two separate text prompt fields. One is entirely disconnected, while the other properly interfaces with the control net and instance diffusion tracking prompts. So to configure our transformation, we'll want to type or paste the text prompt into this connected field or predefine it up here like I've done with brown bear dancing. 
This should then instruct instance diffusion to apply that descriptive prompt while transferring the dancer's movements into a dancing bear creature. Let's give it a run. Overall, while there are some unrefined aspects and minor bugs to work through in these initial instance diffusion plus ComfyUI implementations, the creative potential is fantastic. Combining precise object masking, motion tracking, and controllable choreographed animation paths with Stable Diffusion's powerful image generation is a game changer. As the tooling and integration continue maturing, I can envision this enabling entirely new creative workflows and VFX capabilities that simply weren't feasible before. The implications for character animation, motion graphics, digital filmmaking, and beyond are really exciting to explore. There's definitely still work to be done refining the interface and ironing out quirks, but having this adaptable foundation that empowers structured control over generated video elements is a monumental step. I'm looking forward to diving deeper into developing specialized tools on top of this tech. Let's go ahead and queue up the prompt to see the results. The first step will be loading all the individual video frames and passing them through the DWPose preprocessor to extract the human key points. I've updated this workflow to bypass the problematic YOLO bounding box tracker as I couldn't get that particular custom node functioning properly despite installing the required YOLO segmentation models. Sometimes you just have to pivot and find an alternative approach. They've also included the necessary tracking data inputs for instance diffusion, which come packaged in the same control net custom nodes we're already familiar with. This gives us access to preprocessors like DW Pose, Open Pose, Linear Cartoon, and more alongside the standard control net components. By default, these video tracking nodes do have an Open Pose tracking option baked in as well. However, I ran into the same error executing that as I did with the YOLO tracker, so there seem to be some fundamental implementation issues with this specific custom node pack. I wouldn't recommend relying on these particular tracking nodes for object segmentation or key point extraction. It's better to fall back on the tried and true control net custom nodes from the main ComfyUI package, which also conveniently include tracking output capabilities. For whatever reason, these tracking components weren't robustly developed by the author. But no need to get bogged down there. We can simply bypass those altogether and utilize the control net nodes we know and trust. I'll plug the OpenPose bounding box tracker from the main package directly into the instance diffusion tracking input. This will pipe the extracted key points into instance diffusion as the object tracking data, which it can then use to guide the transformations according to the text prompt. Speaking of which, let's revisit the text prompt we've defined. Brown bear dancing. The goal will be to take the dance video and morph the person into a dancing brown bear creature while retaining their movements. We have the standard SD 1.5 checkpoint loading in, with LoRa and animating objects enabled to facilitate the motion transfer. The LoRa output connects to the animated models for injecting the choreography. Then the crucial components are these instance diffusion model loaders, the positioning net, fuse net, and scale U net models we downloaded get loaded independently. The scale unit applies some pre-processing to the animated output before plugging into the main instance diffusion sampling node, marrying it with the text prompt conditions and tracking data. On the condition side, we're passing in the control net output for general positive, negative prompts, which will combine with the dancer key point tracking to instruct instance diffusion exactly which elements to transform based on the brown bear dancing text. With that set up, let's trigger the cue and watch it generate. And there we have it. The human dancer has been transfigured into a lumbering brown bear creature, retaining those choreographed dance moves as described in the prompt. One aspect to note is that the current output video is rendered at only 8 frames per second, resulting in pretty choppy, stuttering motion. There are also some skipped frames compared to the original smooth video. If we want to elevate the quality, we can increase the sampling by switching this setting to 1 instead of every fourth frame being processed. That will ensure all video frames get captured for higher fidelity motion. This particular workflow config has a frame limit cap set to just 20 frames, likely for the sake of speeding up demo renderings. But for finalized videos, 
we'd want to extend that out to encompass the full desired clip length. Overall, while there were some hiccups getting the segmentation tracking integrated robustly, the core instance diffusion video transformation capabilities are exceptionally promising. The ability to take robust motion data and apply precise, controllable element transformations using text prompts is wildly powerful. While there's still work to be done smoothing out the UX and technical quirks, having this foundational architecture for choreographing stylized, art-directed video elements is monumental. I'm looking forward to further developing specialized tools built upon these incredible instance diffusion capabilities. Here's a video of three kids sitting on the street hanging out. With instance diffusion, I could potentially transform them into three monkeys sitting under a tree and eating. That's the type of creative scene manipulation we can pull off. Before running it, we need to set the output video dimensions width and height correctly and make sure you've downloaded the required control net models if you don't already have them installed. I'm still not sure why the author of this instance diffusion workflow was so sloppy with some of the control net connections just left dangling and unused. It feels rather unrefined. Since we're relying on the open pose or DW pose key points for object tracking, we can disregard the extraneous open pose control net input. I'd recommend sticking with either the soft edge or linear control net models. For the output, let's render at a smooth 24 frames per second clip rather than the default choppy 8 FPS. And be sure to set the frame limit cap to something reasonable that your hardware can handle. Don't leave it at zero, or it will try processing the entire video, which could easily exhaust your VRAM. To make this monkey transformation entertaining, our text prompt will be something like three monkeys eating and lounging under trees. That concisely describes the scene we want to create. We'll plug that prompt in and let it run its course. Okay, here are the results. The three kids have been transformed into three distinct monkeys, retaining their seated positions but now lounging underneath some large trees in the background. The monkey models themselves look reasonably consistent without any glaring artifacts or deformities to their bodies or facial features. Not the highest fidelity, but decent results given. This is just a quick demo workflow. By optimizing the pipeline or building out a dedicated instance diffusion video-to-video -video tool, we could certainly elevate the quality further. That's something I plan to explore more in future AI animation updates. The other example workflow from their GitHub focuses on the spline editor concept, which integrates KJ Notes' tools for choreographing motion paths that drive instance diffusion tracking. As covered previously, this KJ Notes update enables creating key-framed instance diffusion tracks by explicitly plotting out XY coordinate splines, very similar to the lighting animation controls in CL Light, and you can manipulate these arrow paths to steer the motion of different objects through the video frame by frame. Each spline curve corresponds to an individual object's trajectory. Within this workflow, we have these instance class nodes that define bounding box dimensions for confining the motion data to specific regions, like outlining a hand area to animate. The KJ Notes custom nodes will essentially mask and project the motion along the plotted spline path within those bounding boxes. All of these independent tracking conditions then feed into the append instance diffusion tracking node, which concatenates the motion data for multiple objects into a unified stream. In this example, we're combining the hand paths, a bird's flight path, and another hand's movements into one cohesive animation. This appended tracking gets paired with corresponding text prompts that provide high-level descriptions for how each object instance should be transformed, such as labeling one as a bird to apply the avian aesthetic. The tracking data stream and prompt stream then connect into the core instance diffusion sampling node. This maps the text descriptions onto the plotted motion paths while integrating any additional control net conditioning. From there, the output gets rendered as a stylized, spatio-temporally coherent animation matching the orchestrated object trajectories. The beauty is having this structured control over the motion of multiple independent elements within the frame. Instead of just generic camera movements, you can explicitly choreograph the performance of each subject, 
Let's queue up this example and see it in action. As you can see, we have three articulated components animating precisely along their defined paths, a bird taking flight and two hands gesturing expressively. The motion and transformations aptly cleanly following the keyframe it curves with consistent, temporally stable instance modeling, pretty impressive results from high-level text and trajectory inputs, this editing paradigm opens up exciting possibilities for motion graphics, VFX, and animation production. Being able to storyboard out intricate object performances and have them automatically manifest into polished, art-directed animations is wildly powerful. While the UI and workflow integration still feel reasonably raw, the underlying spatial, temporal coherency achieved by marrying motion tracking, structured keyframing, and text-driven instance generation is incredibly promising. I'm excited to further explore and refine these techniques into more streamlined creative tools. The real power of instance diffusion comes from its ability to intelligently handle object-level transformations using noise modeling, enabling clean instance tracking without deforming or distorting the subjects. I firmly believe these instance diffusion techniques are not only viable, but actively compelling for elevating animated video-to-video -video workflows. By thoughtfully integrating instance diffusion components alongside existing animation pipelines, we can substantially improve motion consistency and the overall temporal stability of stylized renderings. While I struggled to get the YOLO bounding box and open pose trackers functioning properly within these example workflows, I'd certainly encourage others to share solutions if they've found ways to robustly integrate those components. For my quick fix, reverting to the traditional control net pose extractors and piping that tracking data into instance diffusion produced reliable results. Regardless of the specific implementations, I really hope this demo provides some inspiring insight into the creative potential of leveraging instance diffusion for sophisticated video processing and motion transfer tasks. The architectural innovations unlocked by these models are incredibly exciting to explore. The prospects for transforming digital content production are staggering when you begin combining structured data representations, instance-level control, temporal coherency modeling, and the generative capabilities of diffusion models. While the current iteration definitely has some unrefined edges to smooth out on the user experience side, the foundational modeling achievements are monumental. Having a framework for choreographing high-fidelity art-directable video elements through text interfaces alone is wildly empowering. I'm eager to see how these instance diffusion systems continue evolving. There's surely still plenty of challenges to overcome, but I believe we're witnessing the very earliest stages of an epical paradigm shift catalyzed by generative AI. The ability to conjure vivid visualizations from simple prompts while enforcing precise spatio-temporal coherency constraints is opening up vast frontiers of creative expression. As these technologies continue advancing and become more accessible through refined tooling, I can envision entirely new disciplines emerging at the intersection of machine learning, animation, and synthetic media authoring. If you found value in this demo, I'd recommend staying vigilant in following the latest developments in areas like diffusion models, motion understanding, video processing, and multimodal generative systems. For instance, diffusions. Try out, guys. I hope you guys get some inspirations how you can use this diffusions model Maybe you can use that in other ways to leverage this technology. And I will see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.